Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us uh, the end time uh, message, uh, to not only to receive it to ourselves, but to be able to spread it to the whole world. It is our hope and pray this time that today that many people will receive it and will apply it to their life so we all can be safe. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so in the previous program, we were talking about this uh, uh, leaven and the bread. Yes. And, and, and the meat and the due season, right. which Brother Patrick and you were saying that it is, and I agree, of course, the, the, the message for this end time, the message is. Yes, but we just showed. The from, present truth is the three angels' message. Yes, and we showed that from the scriptures, right. the present truth, Second Peter 1, 12. Right. We also showed the three angels' messages mm. are connected to that because of the fact it is meat in due season and it's present truth and it's the message of righteousness by faith. Right, and to the everlasting gospel that needs to be reached throughout the whole world right. according to Matthew 24, 14. Right, now Go we ahead. were talking about the issue of we could see that this message or the three angels message is also seen in an actic parable. Mm -hmm. And so therefore we went to Genesis 6, I mean Genesis 18 verses 1 through 6 and we read about the story of Abraham and Sarai and Sarai making bread. And the purpose of her making bread was for three strangers. I asked mm -hmm. you, did Abraham know the strangers? Mm -hmm. We all agreed that he did not. But at the same time, what does the Bible say about strangers? We read Hebrews 13, 2 that says, be ne be, and be well, be, beware. Be not forgetful. Be not forgetful to entertain what? Strangers, strangers. Mm -hmm. for some have entertained angels unaware. Mm -hmm. So question, who was Abraham entertaining on the plains of uh, Mambri? He entertained three strangers or three angels. angels right. One of them was the Lord himself. That's, right. that's okay. why he bowed. That's why he worshipped him. Right. That's, but, but at the same time, one was the Lord himself to the point the Lord told him he was about to go destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. And what was God's message for Sodom and Gomorrah? He sent two angels. Right. Two is a number in Bible scripture. It represents division. So those two angels that would go to Sodom, mm. the one, they, would talk, they would be preaching a message of division, meaning come, go get you up, flee for your life, for God will destroy this place. Judgment, a message of judgment. Right, which goes to the second angel's message mm -hmm. uh -huh. that calls for you coming out of Babylon, mm -hmm. coming out of the world, mm -hmm. or coming out of sin, all right? Mm -hmm. This is the catch. But going back to what we're talking about, bread in the Bible is a symbol of the word of God. Mm -hmm. The woman had what made, made bread in three measures, right? But leaven is put into what? Bread for mm -hmm. it to what? Rise, isn't that right? So we found out that's the, that's the natural way of that, or the natural illustration of it. But spiritually speaking, leaven in the Bible is a symbol of doctrine. Right. What we read in Matthew chapter 16, <clears throat> verse 12, right. verse Matthew right. 16, 6, and mm -hmm. Matthew 16, 12. Right. We found out that, that leaven refers to what? Doctrine, doctrine. right? Yeah. And so therefore, watch this now. And we go back to the parable, the kingdom of heaven, the gospel of the kingdom, the message of righteousness by faith, is like leaven, but leaven is found in bread. Bread represents the word of God. Mm -hmm. Matthew 4.4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. So bread, we find out, is a symbol of the word of God. Mm -hmm. But what's put into the bread? What's put into the word of God? Mm -hmm. Doctrine. Mm -hmm. Do the scriptures teach doctrine, by the way? Yeah. Go to 2 Timothy 3.16 with me. 2 Timothy 3.16, what does mm -hmm. the Bible say? It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for what? Doctrine, Doctrine. for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. So the Bible shows that bread is a symbol of doctrine, right? Mm -hmm. And so wait a minute. So what's hid in, the, what's hid in this kingdom of heaven, in this uh, bread that yep. has, what is, it, what is this leaven? This leaven is doctrine. But this doctrine carries what? Three measures or three messages in it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What, where does God like to hide things? Because remember, this doctrine was hid. Where does God hide things in the Bible? Mm -hmm. What book of the Bible does God hide things in? 
God hide things in the book of Revelation. Right. Remember, but the God pronounced a blessing on the book of Revelation. What does right. he say? Right. Blesses he that readeth, and they that hear the words of his prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So wait a minute. In the book of Revelation, God hid a doctrine that's in three measures. What doctrine is hidden revelation that's in three messages or three special messages for this time? It is found in Revelation 14, 6 through 12. Amen. Remember, and I saw another angel flying to the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto the well on the earth to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, mm -hmm. saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's the second one. And the third one says what? And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark and his in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Wait a minute. Three measures of bread, or three messages coming from the book of Revelation, hid in the bread, the word of God. Finish Are with, you with verse me 12. In verse 12 it says, then about, so here are the patience of the saints. Here are they to keep the commandments of God mm -hmm. and have the faith of Jesus. Origin drop. Revelation. So, so what we see now, what? We find that the three angels' messages is bread. This is a leaven of bread, leaven that's hid in the bread in the word of God in three special messages. Mm -hmm. At the same time, these three special messages is present truth for this time. It's the meat in due season that calls God's faithful servants who preach present truth not to eat and drink with the drunken, mm. which is the, representing the apostate churches of Babylon that have turned away from following the word of God to exalt custom, tradition, and worldliness. Wow. The ecumenical movement is going this way, and the three angels' messages are going the opposite direction. Do we, do we see now more clearly how the Bible says that Jesus will come as a thief on the night? Because most of the people don't have a clue. Uh, you, you go out and you know what I'm talking about. We're getting feedback from even outside of the United States saying we never have heard such a thing that you've been bringing to us. But it, it's been here. The re it, the re it, it, it's the meat for the due season. <laughs> it's the last, the very last to the judgment. You know what I was coming to my mind right now? When you, while you were talking about these three men that came in, three angels, to Abraham... They were in the mission of to destruction, so just right. uh, uh, judgment. Right. Right. The same thing for the three angels' messages. They're coming with a mission of destruction, Behold, but, but judgment, you, but also at the same time to prepare us, you and me, all of us, not to, uh, uh, to take the, the second coming of Christ as a thief in the night, but people that will be watching. Now, some, right. people, some people will say that, that, that that's just your Seventh-day Adventist no, interpretation. But let me break something out. Remember, the three angels came to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Two went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. Is that right? right? But now, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot. Look mm -hmm. what Jesus said now. Matthew Listen carefully. Know. It appears that Noah preached in 120 years in his day. But when you go to Lot, you just see Lot. But listen carefully. Who came to Lot? Angels came to Lot. Mm -hmm. Don't miss, don't miss yeah. this. Yeah. And they, were, they had a message for Lot. And what was the message? Up, get you out this place, flee, for God will destroy it, right? right. Listen carefully. But look here very carefully in Revelation, uh, I mean, uh, Luke 17, and look at verse 28 with me. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, what were the people doing abroad? As Patrick said, they're drinking wine, they're having fun, they're having pleasure. Look what it says here. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day of the Son of Man. Now notice very carefully here something very, very most important here. When the Son of Man is what? Revealed. Wait a minute. Jesus said the sign of Lot's day was that they were what? Eating, drinking, what? And he said they planted, they built, they bought, they sold. That was the sign of the time and a characteristic of the end time for us. Mm -hmm. But we must remember also that two angels came to Lot. So there, God sent two messages to Lot. And the second, and the message was to tell Lot to come out of Sodom. Mm -hmm. Are you with me now? Yeah. So Jesus said in the last days, if the last days are like the days of Lot, then God will send three messages. He will send three angels as he sent three angels in the days of Sodom. Mm -hmm. You see, Abraham was living in the time of Sodom. Mm -hmm. 
And when the three angels came, they came because they're on the destructive mission to destroy Sodom. And Abraham pleased, Lord, if there be 50 righteous, if there be 40 right, if there be 10 righteous, will you spare the city? And God said, I'll spare it for 10. But when he got to Sodom, there wasn't even 10. And then, now, so wait a minute, though. What did he send? What did he send? Three. Three angels. And in the end time, what will God send to warn the people when the days of Sodom and Gomorrah are now festering across the globe? What will God send in the days of Noah that's going around when we see him destruction and people laughing, eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage and living in abundantly degenerate lives and intemperance? What will God send? He will send three angels again. And the angel's message will call them, call them out of Babylon. It will call them to fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgments come. Why? Because Jesus said, you better keep your garment and keep your garments dealing with the work of the Christ in the sanctuary and your name. He come into your name in visitation. Amen. But I'm just saying, and then the third angel's message, what? Don't worship the beast and his image. Why? Because while you got Sodom and Gomorrah going on, while you got drunkenness and revelry of Noah's Day going on, you're going to have a situation where the people are going to be led through drunkenness and worldliness. They're going to, the, 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 the pendulum is going to push towards worshiping God on a, on a spurious Sabbath and not on his true Sabbath. And God says, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the, that, that all parallels was what, what was happening in Belshazzar's day while, while the handwriting was on the wall and then Cyrus coming in mm. as a thief, drying up the river Euphrates and right. coming through the gates, right. <laughs> establishing a new kingdom. So basically, so what, we, so what we just saw, we saw the three angels' messages in the parable, and now we see again that, by the way, I'm going to put you this point now because the Bible said, blesses he did keep of his garments, right? Mm -hmm. Well, keep of his garments is dealing with something. Go with me to Matthew 22. Go back with me to Matthew 22. Jesus gave another, gave another parable and illustration dealing with the Jewish nation, but also dealing with Christianity at the end of time. Yeah. Listen very carefully. Most people like marriages. You like marriages? I love it. Yeah, you like marriages. Okay. Yeah, Most people it. like marriages, it. and it. I'm quite sure those who are watching us like marriages yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And when you go to a marriage, you're supposed to have on your best. Is wow. that right? Or you're supposed to, or you're, if you had an invitation, yeah. you're supposed to come dressed a certain way. Isn't That's that right? right? Well, Jesus has given invitation. He is a bridegroom, and he's about to get married, mm -hmm. and he's inviting some guests to the wedding. Mm -hmm. But the people that came, that he first invited, found themselves not worthy, and they mm -hmm. took it lightly. So he sent out messengers again to send out, to invite others. And he, actually, he told them to go into the highways and to the byways. Right, but, but it was so uh -huh. special, yes. that wording, that he himself, the bridegroom, mm -hmm. uh, was giving to every guest, yeah, yeah I'm going to come. I'm right. coming. I'm coming. Right. No, no, That's but, part of the invitation. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Oh, yeah. I know okay. you want to come okay. back. Okay. Hold okay. it right there. We'll be right back. Hi, friends. I'd like to introduce you to a special book that we have available. It's the story of Pastor Rafael Perez's journey from preparing to be a priest in the Roman Catholic Church and how God worked very providentially in his life to turn him from that decision to following Jesus in the light of present truth. If you've been blessed by the Eternal Gospels program, we want to invite you to receive our new book entitled From Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. It is the personal testimony of our speaker and director, Rafael Perez. But more than this, if you want courage, if you want strength, this personal testimony of this 150 page book will give you insights into why God is calling men and women out of Babylon. And if you'd like to receive it today, just call the number at the bottom of your screen and ask for offer 777. That's offer 777. Why seven? Because the seventh day is the Sabbath. Why seven? Because the Sabbath was sanctified. Why seven? Because the final issues in this great controversy is between the Sabbath and Sunday. That is my journey. I hope and pray that you are going to order the book right now from Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. May God bless you all. Welcome back. I'm a brother. Yes, what we were just bringing out that remember, the whole idea is that Jesus, Jesus is inviting you to a wedding. And when you come to a wedding, you must have on 
you, they told you what type of tire you must wear. Mm. The invitation usually says, I have on tuxedo or whatever, or you know, formal, formal clothing right. and everything else, all right? So we find here that Jesus, as he invites us to this wedding, mm. now remember, he's getting ready to get married, but as he invites us to the wedding, the Bible says he invites them and those who were worthy, when those who invited were not worthy. So he sent his servants back out to invite those who would be worthy. He sent them into the highways and byways, right? Mm -hmm. But now listen carefully. Then it says here, but when the king heard thereof that he, I'm sorry, when it, they, I'm, let me go further down, verse 10. So the servants went out into where? The highways, highways. and by it said the highways and gathered together as many as they could find, both for what? Bad, Bad and good. This is like wheat and tares, all right? right? It says here, and watch this, and the wedding was what? Furnished with mm. guests. Mm. Before you and I are talking about we're going to heaven, there must be an inspection of our lives. Mm. God must look to see. You see, you can profess all day that you are Christian. You can walk around here all day with a suit on or with a tie or thump a Bible or not have a Bible, doesn't matter. Profess to be a Christian. But God says, I can't take you to heaven on your profession. I'm going to take you to heaven by an inspection. I'm going to, I'm going to inspect your life. I'm going to inspect your character. I'm going to see if you really, really represent me. Because in the last days, Paul forewarned, he said, there should be those who have a form of godliness, but deny the power. And he said, from such turn away, right? So listen carefully to the parable. Because remember, this parable of the wedding is taking place and it will take place at the time when Christ is in the heavenly sanctuary as your high priest. God provided, he said, I provided a wedding and I provided a garment through my son for everyone. Right. Uh -huh. so, so this we're going to see, but watch carefully now. It says, and when the king came to see the guests, this word see in the actual Greek means to inspect, inspect to look right. closely on with examination. This is, what we, this is where you get the term investigation or an investigative judgment. You, because the king is looking on. He's not just accepting them into the kingdom. He's looking to see. Watch, what, watch carefully what he inspects for. Watch mm -hmm. carefully. He says here, it says it's to see his guests. Watch here, to see the what? The guests, the people that had the invitation, the people that were supposed to come to the wedding with the right clothes on. Mm -hmm. Watch carefully. He saw there a man that had not on a what? Wedding garment. Wedding garment. Mm -hmm. Now, what type of people were invited to the wedding? Everybody who professed to believe in they right. were invited, right? right? Good and bad. But now when the king comes in to investigate, he finds a man there that doesn't have on a what? A wedding mm -hmm. garment, meaning that he did not keep his garment. He didn't care about so it. So wait a minute. When did Jesus, when does, a, when does Jesus, reveal, when is it revealed that you and I will not have a garment? Will it be revealed at the second coming? That's the ultimate, that's the ultimate issue of you being found naked. But the real issue of you being found naked is in the hour of his judgment when the first angel's message said, fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Worship in the mayhem, but the hour of his judgment is dealing with the prophecy of the 2300 days that brings us into the hour of the judgment that has been going on since 1844. Mm. And now it's going soon, move to the righteous living as we move towards the day of trouble or the time of trouble, which is bringing in Sunday observance and the mark of the beast. Mm. And so we're going to find here, look very carefully what it says here. It says, and when the king came to see the guests, he saw that there was a man that had not on a what? A wedding garment. What is this garment? Revelation 16, 15. Look what the Bible says here. Oh, that's it the says text here, that we're it said, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his what? Garment. garment. What garment is this? This is the wedding garment. Right. It's the wedding garment of Christ's righteousness that you were to have on while the judgment was taking place. Amen. And he said, you must have this garment on, lest the what? Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Or lest he is found by visitation of the high priest, you are found without the wedding garment, you will be found naked. And therefore, listen what Jesus said. And he said to him, friend, how cameth thou to the cleansing of the sanctuary? Friend, how cameth thou to the most holy place? Friend, how cameth thou to the investigative judgment, to this wedding? And it says here, uh, without, uh, without having a wedding garment. And the Bible says he was speechless. Mm -hmm. And then it didn't stop there. Listen what the Bible said happened to those who did not have Christ-like character, did not have on the wedding garment. It says, then said the king, 
to the servants, bind them hand and bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus says one other thing: many are called. Many hear the call of the gospel, but few are chosen. You're only chosen when you hear the three angels' messages and you respond to that message, realize it is the message of Christ's righteousness and it's a message of, of, of a doctrine warning us of the times in which we're now living in and warn us about the, not to worship the beast in his image and all the rest. Amen. Amen. Well, this is what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, the same thing we find it on Revelation chapter 19, but the church in their is found the true church of God, you know, Christ people, Revelation 19, 7 and on. Brother Patrick, can you read it, please? It says in that verse 7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, mm. and his wife hath made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Amen. Now notice it says the righteousness of saints, which goes so back to the message of Christ's righteousness, which is right. in the three angels' messages. Right. That's right. So the the whole picture is that the people that will be that yeah, the second it. coming of Christ will be taken as a thief in the night mm -hmm. are those people who are not being being fed, spiritually speaking, with this do season meat. Right. which is found on the three angels' messages. Right, which the Spirit of, and, God, which and, the Spirit and, of and, God is trying to get them ready for that so they can be dressed and clothed to meet their Lord, first of all, through investigation and judgment, and then finally in the clouds of heaven because mm -hmm. their names are retained in the book right. of life. And, and that's the reason that we encourage our friends at, at large to, to, to take heed of these messages. And that is a reason to why Satan, through his agent, and institutions are trying to oppose so much into the proclamation of these three angels' messages. Let, yes, Brother Pat, he wants right, to say right, something right, first. Right. Well, the last verse in Revelation 19, verse 9 says, yeah. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called right. unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Right. And, he say, and so this is direct link to Matthew 22 parable. Right, right. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Amen. Now, why, am I, why, why is this so important? Because... Why is he, in fact, why is he, what is he examining? You know, people think you're just making up stuff. What is he examining when he talks about he came to see the guests? He came to examine the guests. The Bible says one, of a, the Bible says one thing here. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel and with Clement also and with others, my fellow laborers, whose names are where? In the book of life. In the book of life. All right? The names are in the book of life, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when Daniel 7 came on, the, Daniel 7 says the judgment was set. Mm -hmm. Daniel 7, 9, and 10, the judgment was set, and the books were open. The books that were open was the, one of the books that was open was the book of life. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, you must be an overcomer to keep your name in that book. Right. Overcoming sin. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding this? Mm -hmm. Look carefully. In Revelation 3, 5, it says, he did overcome up, the same shall be clothed in what? White, White rain. This White is the rain. garment that he told you to keep mm. Mm. in Revelation uh, 16, 15. And do you notice it was a gift? It says he gave it to his guests. Yes. It was his <laughs> righteousness. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was his, look at Philippians 3, 9. Look mm. at Philippians 3, 9. The Bible said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, it says, And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, right. but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God, by faith. Mm. So righteous by faith is the garment that you and I are supposed to have at the time of Revelation chapter 16 when the plague's about to call. We must be sure we have on the garment otherwise, because that garment carries with it Christ's righteousness and the seal of the living God. Amen. Now, if without that, we cannot stand and we will be destroyed with others in the plague. And we've been studying in previous programs that the seal of the living God is going to be revealed uh, openly by the keeping of the seventh Sabbath. Yeah, the Sabbath in the Ezekiel 20, right. verse 12 and verse 20. And, uh, and that's another reason why we see so much uh, opposition and how the devil is trying to bring out to the whole world a counterfeit Sabbath. Uh, in previous program, I know we, we went through this, but uh, well, since we got new uh, uh, People looking at 
watching this program, I want you to just let's read this one uh, for the sake of uh, the new, this is a statement that Benedict XVI, not that long ago, was saying. In the, can you read it, please, Brother Patrick? The Synod Fathers reaffirmed the importance of the Sunday obligation for all the faithful, viewing it as a wellspring of authentic freedom. Participating in the Sunday liturgical assembly with all our brothers and sisters with whom we form one body in Jesus Christ is demanded by our Christian conscience, and at the same time it forms that conscience. Mm -hmm. Finally, it is, the, it is particularly urgent nowadays mm -hmm. to remember that the Day of the Lord is also a day of rest from work, it is greatly to be hoped that this fact will also be recognized by civil society, the mm. state. He's talking about it's urgent. Pope Benedict, February 22, 2007. Right. He's, he's saying it's urgent. Yeah. It, it, but he's promoting the counterfeit Sabbath. The Bible says it is urgent. It is meat in due season. <laughs> the three angels' mm -hmm. messages which bring, you know, the beautiful truth of the seven-day Sabbath that should be kept not as a way to obtain our salvation, but as a way to, to show His mercy, His grace, that has been giving us the dress, that, that garment, the wedding garment to us. It was a gift to us in order for us to show that, yes, we have received that wedding garment, we must be keeping the right, receive the righteousness of Christ. And the righteousness of Christ come also or will be shown by the obedience of the Ten Commandments. That's right. According to Psalms 190, and this, 172. And, and, the reason, and, Jesus, and Jesus speaks okay. this issue. Right, he yeah. speaks this issue to the last generation. Mm -hmm. The last generation of the church is called Laodicea. Mm -hmm. And the Laodicean, God tells them about their condition. Mm -hmm. Because in the Laodicean <laughs> condition, they are, they, will be, they are the ones that will be naked. Mm -hmm. yeah. at the time the plagues are falling if they do not heed the counsel of the true witness. Mm -hmm. Look what the Bible says in Revelation 3, 18, dealing with them. Okay. In Revelation 3, it says here, it says, I counsel thee by me gold tried in the fire. Mm -hmm. It said that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mm -hmm. mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyes out that thou mayest see. Mm -hmm. Now this is the message to Laodicea, which is connected to the message of Revelation 16, 15, mm -hmm. and the parable of the wedding. All right, man. Okay, let's close with this by today. And then I promise to you in the same channel, same hour, we will expand. We will continue with this, such an important topic. And maybe we might be able to get into this so-called the Armageddon, the battle of Armageddon that will be taking place at the very end of this earth history. In the meantime, God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel. P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.